Decision three, analysis. Quite often you have to make important decisions faced with uncertainty beyond your control. In those situations, you can also find very useful to apply the so-called decision tree method. I will show you using the example, how does it actually work? So imagine that you are to build a chocolate factory and you have to decide on the size of this factory. So you have basically two options. You can either create a big factory that will cost 50 million or a small version that will cost 30 million. But the uncertainty is around the size of the demand. So it can be big demand or a small demand. In the case of the big factory, if the demand is big, then you will do 100 million EBITDA in five years. If small, then just 20. For the small factory, the big demand will cause you just to produce 50 million, whereas uh, the small demand will let you earn 30 million of EBITDA. We also put the probability of each and every scenario. So the big demand is 60% and the small demand is 40. This leads us to different outcomes. So if we build a big factory and uh, we are faced with the big demand, then obviously the net effect will be 50 million. Calculated as the difference between the EBITDA, five-year EBITDA, and uh, the big factory investment cost. Small demand will mean that we'll actually be losing money so we will be 30 million less because the cost of the factory is 50 million whereas the beta will be just 20 million so we'll not be able to cover all the investment costs and we have the same for the small factory so 20 million outcome in this region where we have a big demand and in a small demand will be zero so obviously we have to calculate what will be the impact of the big factory given those two different scenarios and small factory using the outcomes we've got here and the probabilities so we calculate the expected value of each and every option. So we basically have the outcome multiplied by the probability of this outcome and we add the outcome to the result as well as the probability of this outcome. So for the big factory, we'll have a 50 million multiplied by 60% minus 30 million. So this is the small demand result and then 40. So this is the probability of this scenario. So it means that for the big factory, the expected value is 18 million. And in the same way, we do the a small factory, which we get that this is 12 million. We can also present it here. So we basically take the outcome of this option and multiply it by the probability of this option. And we do the same here. So we multiply this outcome by the probability of this and we add them. And that's how we get the expected value of 18. We do exactly the same with the small factory. So we multiply 20 by 60% and zero by 40%. And out of this, we get the 12. So out of this, using the decision tree, we would say it makes sense to go for the big factory because the expected return from the investments is 18 million in five years. Whereas with the small factory, it is just 12. Now let's have a look how to present it in Excel. But generally speaking, that's the whole idea behind the decision tree. So you define the decisions, scenarios, you get the outcomes and you calculate the expected value of those decisions using the outcomes and the probabilities.